So hello everybody, um, today I am going to be showing you how to animate fan art in Final Cut Pro 10. So let's jump right into it. I feel like this might be a long video. Um, first you're going to want to obviously choose a picture that you want to animate. I will link this picture in the description. And I will start by saying that you actually have to have an outside program other than Final Cut Pro 10 to actually do this. You can use GIMP, which is a free program, or Photoshop CC if you have it like I do. So yeah, basically what you're going to want to do is pull up the fan art picture that you have, or manga, whatever it is, and um, sort of just like first initially establish what exactly you want to do with the photo. So here, I will just say that this anime is Hitalia before anyone asks. Um, this is Yusak, my OTP. So. Basically, <laughs> I want to move Arthur, this is England, I want to move his arm, like this arm right here, up a little bit, like, kind of like, so it goes up his chest, and maybe move his head over a little bit. So, first we obviously have to cut out the arm, and uh, the only part I want to move, I'll show you really quickly with the lasso tool, the only part I want to move is like, this is really crappy, but, um... Also, I'm really bad at explaining things, so I want this part to move, like, up a little bit, like, something like that. Alright, delete. Okay, so, first you have to cut out the arm. Personally, I find the magnetic lasso tool the easiest to use because it's sort of, basically what it does is, well, if you're using Photoshop, this is what it does. If you're using GIMP, you can use whatever you want. It sort of connects to pixels that are all similar in color. So it makes it really easy to outline the arm. Probably going to speed this up. It's quite a tedious process and it does take time. Don't be discouraged if you don't understand it fully in the beginning because it does take practice, so you'll get it eventually. Okay, so now that you have the part selected that you want to move, you click Command J and that'll sort of just like duplicate it onto another layer. So now we have a layer with just his arm. Okay, don't forget to save your project periodically. I'll just name it two. two. Alright, now I'll show you the animation that I kind of had in mind, but first, in order to do that, we have to go to edit, free transform, command T, or whatever you're, again, if you're using like GIMP or something else, just do whatever works for you. Um, now this right here is called an anchor point, and this is going to be very important with animating. So basically the anchor point is the point at which the object rotates around, so it's kind of difficult to explain. But usually on people that point is going to be a joint, so with pra also with practice you'll begin to recognize like where the anchor point should go. So here with the arm we're going to want to set it somewhere at the elbow because this is the place that it will rotate most naturally. That's a little bit off so I'm going to click command Z and just like play around with it. Mm. I mean, we're, we're not going to be like rotating it that much, so that should suffice. Okay, that's good enough for me. Um, so yeah, it is the, the anchor point is the point that the arm rotates around. Um, for example, if it's here, the arm will rotate around this point on his hand. But obviously that's very unnatural because people's elbows kind of don't just detach from their arm. So now that we've established what exactly we want to do, and we've mirrored what it's going to look like, you can tell that there is a problem. When we rotate this, his arm is still underneath here, and we can't have that, so what we have to do, I'm just gonna uncheck this layer right now so that we have it off, and go on to the background layer. We have to basically take out this entire arm and make it look like there was no arm here to begin with. So what you have to do is fill in the background. So we have to fill it in with his clothes, and this is the part that can actually be the most difficult and the most time consuming because it takes like, a lot to get it right, but it doesn't always have to look super accurate because not many people are really going to be paying attention to this part. Um, this probably makes no sense, but as we continue, it'll make sense. So basically, I'm just going to select my clone tool over here. Um, how to use it. If you want to make the brush bigger or smaller, just click Control and Alt at the same time, and you can just hold and drag and then change the size. And um, remember, we have to clone out like this entire arm that we selected earlier. So you're going to want to hold Alt or Option, 
and select the pixels nearby. Basically what this does is it selects pixels that you're on and if you drag over this it'll replace it with the pixels that you selected earlier. So I'm gonna undo that and make it look like this part is still his jacket, his red jacket. So I'm just gonna periodically press alt and just kind of dab it to make it look a little bit more natural because the clone tool is confusing and I can't explain it that well. You just, again, you learn it with like practice. So we're just gonna clone this arm out. Also for our purposes, I'm not gonna make this super amazing because obviously this is tutorial and it's not gonna be perfect. Just so you guys can kind of gauge how exactly I did this in my video. I know it doesn't look natural. So now it, it is a little bit tricky because we have to fill in all these parts that are not going to not supposed to be there because we're moving it in the other layer. Yeah, I'm really bad at explaining things, but you'll you'll get it once we do it. Also, we have to pretend that this strap is still there. Um Another thing to note is that you do not have to be artistic whatsoever to do this. I personally am one of the worst drawers I know, <laughs> and I am still able to do this. So, obviously this background is part is going to be black because his uniform is black in this area, so that's nice and easy to do. Um, you can also periodically like recheck this area just to see what you have to clone out because this essentially essentially this object that you cut out is what you want to get rid of from the background so basically all his fingers and his arm you can also really use your brush tool if it's easier for you because, I mean, when you're doing solid colors, you can easily get this black. Okay. I know this looks really bad, but for our purposes, again, it is actually fine. I don't care. Um, so, again, let's just go into our free transform. Whoops, sorry. Go into the right layer first. Uh, go into the free transform and just move this anchor point just to see what it would look like if I were to actually rotate this. And see that looks pretty good. Um, you can tell that this is kind of unnatural, but nobody really focuses on that. So I mean, if if you really want to fix it, go ahead. But this is essentially what the rotation would look like. Actually, I just realized I missed something right here. See, that's why I like to try it in. Photoshop before actually exporting everything. So let's get this area. Um, it also doesn't have to look real at all because obviously this looks like really crappy, but it depends how much you want to rotate your arm because if you, if you don't even want to rotate it that much, some of the clothing underneath won't even be shown. For example, I'm probably going to only rotate it like a little bit like this much. So everything underneath that didn't look that great, like this entire part in here won't even be shown. So we don't really have to worry about that. That's why it's nice, except let's just kind of try to get this part fixed up a little bit because this will be shown. Also maybe just fix this a little bit because it doesn't actually look as that good. <laughs> um, I'm just going to decrease the size of my clone tool a little bit. Okay, so we're just going to test it again. Move the anchor point to the joint. Um, I need a little more white in here. Either a little bit of white or a little bit of red, depending on how big you want to make this strap here. Um, actually, I might just come in with a red there, because technically he doesn't need a large strap. There are probably easier ways to do this. I feel like I make things hard for myself a lot of the time, but I'm just showing you guys what I do. Again, a lot of this stuff isn't even going to be seen, so we don't have to worry about it. 
but we can test what will be seen by keeping the arm on the layer. I'm fine with that. I don't care for the purposes of this tutorial. I know it looks kind of bad in here, but you guys get the point, okay? Next, uh, I think I'll try to rotate his head inward a little bit so that he's kind of crying into his hand. So again, take your magnetic lasso tool, or you can use your lasso tool, which basically allows you to do any anything that you want. It doesn't like connect to any specific pixels, but personally I find it a lot more difficult to get precisely in there. So it's kind of difficult to explain this part, but I'm going to make a little bit of a triangle underneath his head so that I have a point of rotation. Okay, again, click Command J, and it makes a new layer. Also, I find it really helpful to name your layers, uh, because when you get a lot of animations, it is a lot to remember. So, again, we're going to do the thing. Um, I'll explain why I added that little triangle. Uh, yeah, that little this little part right here. What I, I did that because if you... Uh, how do I explain this? It's sort of like... A place for the anchor point to go because if you had your anchor point here on this part it doesn't look very natural this is not how heads actually rotate so if you slide it down a little bit uh, you kind of just have to play around with it until you find what you think looks best I think this looks pretty good that's why I had that little triangle just as that so I could test out different anchor points that looks pretty good to me but again, you can see a clear problem with it, and that is the fact that he still has a head behind him when you rotate it. So what we'll do is erase that. We can't have part of, like, this is America, we can't have part of America's head missing, so we actually have to fill that in. Which is why this is quite a tedious and often difficult process, but you'll get the hang of it with practice. I don't really need to erase this part since this will be covered by his actual head anyway. Um, so let's test it now. Set your anchor point, rotate it, and that looks pretty good. But as you can see, there is still another problem. This does not look natural. Half of his head is missing, and if somebody were to actually do this, their head would not go over their hand, it would go under their hand. So basically what we have to do is cut out his arm. And then move this layer on top of his head. So that his head is actually underneath it. You'll see, it'll make more sense once I do it. So basically cut out the arm. Don't need to get like too technical with this part. Just cut out the part that his head is going to go under. Click Command J again, change your layer name, whatever you want, already left arm, okay. And now move this above the head, so that when we rotate the head, it goes into it and it looks more natural. But <laughs> there is another problem, his nose, there's a hole from his nose. So we kind of just have to fill that in. Just go to the arm layer. This is all kind of trial and error as well. Like I didn't, sometimes I don't know that there's going to be an error with something until I check it. So there we just filled that in a little bit. Also, um, I'm just going to erase some of this white. You technically don't have to get like t too precise with this, but it did look a little bit weird. I don't know if you noticed, but anyway, free transform, change your anchor point, rotate, and that looks so much better. With this case, I don't think you have to like add more to the neck, but in some cases, if you wanted to like really rotate its head, let's say you wanted to go a little bit crazy. Um, if you really wanted to rotate his head, you could tell that this does not look real, so you'd have to add a little bit here. Whoops. Just, like, add a little bit of his clothing or his neck, depending on what you want. 
but I'm not gonna do that because this is not a super advanced tutorial. But now we have all that we need, so what I like to do is individually export each of these files and then plug them all into Final Cut Pro and then do it that way, but you could also like export this as a PSD, a Photoshop file, and then just like drag that in to Final Cut Pro 10, but I don't like to do it that way, so I'm just gonna do it this way. First, only check the layer that you're going to export. Go to File, Save As, name it whatever you want, change it to a PNG, then uncheck this file, go to the next one, make sure to only have one file checked at a time, name it, change it to a PNG. PNG basically just makes the background transparent. The next one, go to the last one, I'm saving these all to my desktop so I can easily access them. Okay, and now this is where we go into Final Cut Pro. Um, make a new project if you don't have one already name it whatever you want Let's choose an event I'm just gonna do that yep do whatever you want with this and if you want to select your files from your desktop you can just drag them into here but I kinda like to import select all of the files that I created uh, background is background already left arm already right arm here just import that and then here they are drag them all in place them on top of each other in the well right now don't worry about the order we'll get to the order after you've already like layered them all on top of each other so our bottom layer is gonna have to be the background since that's what it was in the Photoshop file and it looks the most real then we have the head, and keep in mind the head has to be under the left arm or else it does not look, look like his head is going under the hand. We wanted that effect where the head was under the hand instead of over because it looks more natural. So then we'll have the left arm and then the right arm on top. And now, sorry if you hear my dog, okay, first we could either do the, the arm rotation here or the head rotation. So let me just make this a little bit bigger okay so now we'll start with the arm first thing you're gonna want to do is click transform and what you want to do next is change your anchor point anchor point that sounds familiar yep it's the thing that we used in Photoshop that we kept moving around to test the rotation and if it looked natural so here's your X and Y of the anchor point X and Y values if you move this it basically moves the arm or whatever you've selected. So we wanted our anchor point to be around the joint, aka the elbow. So let's just move, this is the anchor point here. Now let's test that rotation. First we could put it back into place and then test the rotation by like clicking this if we wanted. And that looks pretty real. So we can keep that anchor point. Next, Go to your transformation again, keyframe. So start by keyframing the first place that you want it to move, then you can scroll a couple frames over by clicking your right arrow key, or you can move this. I prefer to click my right arrow key though. So you can see, if you look at here, you can see how the frame is moving up when I click my right arrow and down when I click my left arrow. So. I could also zoom in a little bit so you could actually see this moving. Um, I think let's just try a rotation here. Click the keyframe again and come into your rotation. Rotate it however much you want. Let's just try a little bit at first and then play it back. And that's a little bit quick so what I can do is come into this right arm, right click it, click show video animation 
and then move this down a bit and then that will basically move down our rotation so that it's slower like that and that's fine with me I think that looks pretty good obviously this does not look too real but again it's not the focus and it's not the point of this video so that's fine the arm is good all set next we'll do the head so scroll down here always start by changing your anchor point we had this part it was somewhere in here um, then sort of just test if that looks natural and I think that looks pretty good so keyframe the first part move down a little bit I'm just gonna do it where approximately the arm stops moving and then rotate that in and then test it yeah if you move this arm too it looks like a lot more real but for the purposes of this video let's just keep it kind of simple okay so there you have it that's how to animate fan art in Final Cut Pro 10 thanks for watching